Hi, I'm Tony Kent, and this is episode 13 of Tony Kent Writes and Chats. It's the 1st of May, so it's not quite the next day that I promised when I uh, recorded the last episode, but it certainly isn't the 10 or 11 days gap that we had in between uh, those two. You can probably tell that time is passing. We can see uh, we are developing artwork on the back of the wall, uh, being prepared by my increasingly bored two-year-old. It's becoming increasingly impossible for me to hide the fact that I now have the hair of a mad nutty professor, um, but there we are, can't be avoided. That's the downside of the lockdown, one of the many, many downsides of the lockdown. So, where are we? Well, I explained on the last occasion that I had taken some re thinking time, I think is the best way of putting it. I'd explained that there were certain responsibilities with the launch of Powerplay, which I should remind you is in shops now. Unfortunately, none of you are in shops now because we're not allowed there. Um, but the launch of Powerplay uh, had certain responsibilities with getting ready for the launch and also dealing with some foreign rights or foreign issues on Mark for Death and Killer Intent, etc., etc. We spoke about that at length on the last episode. I also spoke about thinking time. And I spoke about how actually, because I'd started this whole thing with this one idea, this one line idea, uh, that I had missed out on my normal couple of months of thinking that I normally do and and we just got headlong in and and, and yeah we, we did I, I think we've been doing well uh, from that starting point but I hadn't been flying as quickly as it normally would and I worried that perhaps that was um, there was a reason for that and I think the reason for that was I needed some thinking time now that the idea had grown so I hoped on the last occasion that that thinking time had been effective and I can confirm today 48 hours later or so, that it had been effective. Uh, the thinking time was very, very helpful, in fact. So, 1st of May, and we are flying again. And as a result of that thinking time, I've been able to achieve something that I always try to achieve in my books. I always begin with a bang, as I've said many times, and certainly did as also in book four. But I also always like to have uh, an organic, very necessary, very natural action scene in the first 100 pages that isn't in the first chapter and I've managed to achieve that now I would have been struggling I think before if I hadn't had the thinking time to achieve that uh, in book four but having had the thinking time having managed to coalesce certain elements of the plot ha having managed to work out exactly where certain characters are going in order that other characters can then join I think um, well, I, I know that I was able to now put in my first 100 pages second action scene and do so necessarily and organically and so that's what I've been writing today and I thought well that's a good chance is it not to have a quick chat about writing action because anyone who reads my books will know I hope that action's a big part of them they are political action thrillers legal action thrillers but they are action thrillers and whilst that it's not the be all and end all I really hope it's not the be all and end all. I hope the characters speak for themselves and people enjoy the rest of the books. Action's a big part. And if you read my reviews, uh, it becomes quite clear that I have managed to build up a bit of a reputation for writing good action. And so I thought you might enjoy or might get something out of me explaining my process for how I go about doing that. And it's too, it's really, um, I don't know how unique this is. It may be exactly how everyone else does it, but, but I'll explain it anyway. It's a, it's a two-tier process for me. First of all, the action has got to be real. It's got to be something that can happen. Nothing takes me out of a book or a TV show or a, a film or, or anything that I'm, that I'm being, sort of, that's being displayed to me more than violence that is just unrealistic. So violence that begins with a flying kick to the head or, or even ends with a flying kick to the head. I, just... All of the absurdity of martial arts films and um, highly trained guys fighting in books, etc., etc. Uh, I, I just I struggle with it, uh, and the reason for that I think is that I have a background that, that that has a violent element, if I can say that in in the nicest possible way. I boxed. I was a boxer for years. I grew up in a in a boxing family. Uh, my two year old son just yesterday was learning to throw a proper overhand right. And he's still toddling away. Um, and I think the result of that is I have a, you know, I, I've got an understanding of violence. I, I grew up in it. I was steeped in it in the nicest possible way. 
I was a proponent of a violent sport, of a very violent sport. I boxed for my first fight, was I was 11, my last fight, I was 22 or 23. I had a lot of fights, I did quite well, I was all right. Wasn't the best, but I was all right. And as a result, I know what it feels like to take a punch. I know what it feels like to deliver a punch. I know that most fights are are won by the guy that throws and lands the first one. Right? All the different things that are, in reality, how a fight really works. I know them and I've lived them. You know, I also grew up in a, in a fairly rough area and had a relatively rough life and a rough upbringing. And, you know, in, again, no insults to my parents, but you know, my, my, my mum raised four boys uh, and a girl. And, you know, that there's, there's just a reality to, to how that is when you grow up in a working class area. And, you know, I've worked security and so many different things have, have led to me having an understanding of the reality of, of violence. And so I, as a first rule, will only write what can happen. Absolutely what can happen. And what I know can happen as somebody who's lived a certain part of this life is very different to what readers think can happen. Because I have had various reviews and various uh, comments about, for example, Mark for Death, main character, Pale Eyes. Uh, Pale Eyes would seem to have no training. Main bad guy, pardon me. Would seem to have no training at all. He would seem to have no background that would suggest that he's quite capable, and yet he's very, very capable. And I've been criticised for that. I've had people say, well, where's his military training? Why has he got none of this training out? And it's absurd. I mean, this is people who are buying in to TV and buying into film. As a barrister of 20 years standing, specialising in serious violence and murder, and before that, as a boxer and somebody who grew up in a world where violence was not uncommon, I can say, I think with some authority, you do not need training to be a tough man. Some of the toughest people, some of the hardest, most dangerous people I have ever encountered in either of my lives have been people who have never stepped foot inside a martial arts dojo or have never held a rank in any military unit at all. They're just hard. It just happens. It's just life. You know, there is a genetic element to this. So all the people who are reading these books and saying, well, where's his training? That's so unrealistic. You don't know what you're talking about, uh, I'm afraid. Mark for Death, Pale Eyes, is based on a real person. Everything he does in this book is an approximation of stuff that he really did. I mean, that's what people, that's what's so ironic about those about those particular um, reviews were, you know, what, where, where does he get this skill from? He's just really tough and it happens. So anyway, I'm, I'm going off on a, on a tangent, but uh, I thought yeah, maybe an, hopefully an interesting tangent. But that's my first tier. My first, the first tier of, of, the, of the process is, can it really happen? Second tier of the process though is, should it happen? Because actually, again, going back to my knowledge and background and experience, Violence is bloody horrible in real life. Violence is not entertaining. Violence is fast and it's over quickly and it's bloody and it's nasty and it's grim. And who wants to read all of that when you're on a beach trying to be entertained? I don't. I read, I read the reality of it when I... I've got a murder case starting. Where as soon as this lockdown ends, I have to go to the old bay and start a murder. If I want to re read about what violence really does, I'll read those case papers. See, I want to read something that's entertaining. So my second tier is, can it happen? But then should it happen? And then what I have to do is find a balance between the two. And it's a very comfortable balance. And the, the way I kind of do it is, I, for the can it happen, there's a lot of moving around. Now I sit here doing these talks and I'm just sitting, I move my hands a lot, I know, but I'm otherwise just sitting here. When I'm in that room there writing, I'm up and I'm about and I'm moving, I'm moving my weight this way to see where uh, someone's body weight would, would go if I were to move my back leg a certain way. I act these things out. Maybe everyone does, I don't know, but I act them out as someone who's been in these situations. But then also I heighten them and I move, I remove the reality uh, in the sense that of, I remove the nastiness of the reality because we are writing entertainment. And so therefore, when I write violence, it's a two-tier process. It is, could it happen? That's essential. But then, should it happen? Or should we heighten it? And should we make it a little bit less real so that people can read this and actually entertain? It's very rare in a real life situation to have a cheering moment. It's very rare to have a guy in a white hat that you want to win. And we need that, don't we, when we're writing these books. And therefore, it can't be too real. 
but it also has to be real at the same time. So that's the philosophy. That's how I go about writing uh, violence in my books. Hopefully that was interesting. I hope there may be some questions arising from it. If you have questions, please put them in the comments below. Any questions at all, either about this or about anything else. About three weeks ago, we had a whole episode all arising from a single question. Uh, I'd like to do that again. I involved a lot of other writers and, uh, and it was really enjoyable. Uh, so I'd quite like to do that again. So any questions, please just stick them in the comments below. Also, I've said before, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. And as of next week, I'm going to be setting up yet another little series. Haven't thought of a name yet, but I'm going to be interviewing um, some writers that you will have heard of. Just short five, ten minute interviews, um, maybe one a week or two a week. And uh, hopefully you'll find that interesting too. But all of that aside, in the meantime, I'm going to about to go back into there. I'm about to uh, write a few more chapters. And tomorrow I'll be back to tell you about some of it. Thank you very much.